uh, I was 16 years old when the when we came together and uh, informed Nagelfar. It was uh, me and uh, my good friend Jens Rudén. Uh, to start with, uh, I mean, uh, in, in the beginning, we nobody of us uh, could even play an instrument back in that time. I mean, this was just something that we did for fun. We came together. Uh, it was a local youth club, if I don't remember wrong, and uh, in there we got a space uh, for ourselves that we could use uh, for rehearsals and stuff. And uh, I mean, we were basically just a couple of guys coming together, trying to practicing on <laughs> on our instruments. In the beginning, uh, we didn't really have any strategies or anything. I mean. The only thing that we really wanted to achieve with our band was to be good enough to, to be able to to get a slot on a on a gig or something back in those days. But uh, I mean, the situation was hard, and uh, back then there were not very many bands playing this style. I mean, it it was still a time where where people were more influenced by the American death metal scene, and also, of course, the the death metal scene that uh, was located more in, in the southern parts of Sweden, bands like Entomb, Dismember, Unleashed. But uh, then, of course, there were also just a few other melodic bands coming out at the same time as us. And uh, I mean, there were bands like Eucharist, In Flames, uh, Dissection came about at the same time, and uh, and then us. After about half a year or so, uh, Andreas Nelson joined our band, and uh, from that point on, uh, as he was already kind of, uh, oh, I mean, at least he could he, he could actually play guitar, and that was more than than the other of us could. So uh, yeah, he helped out a lot and uh, helped us to visualize certain ideas that we had. I mean, uh, in the in the beginning of our band, we were so influenced by. I mean the the so-called uh, new wave of British heavy metal was something that uh, the guys in our band we were all grown up with that kind of stuff. So I think uh, in the beginning Iron Maiden was a very big influence on us. But then of course we wanted to do something else. I mean we wanted to do something more dark, something more sinister, and uh, I mean of course we were no players like the guys in in Iron Maiden and still are not of course, but. Uh, then again, we we always try to do our own thing, with just a ju just a little bit of influence put into it. So after after about uh, one year, we we were ready as as a, as a team to enter the studio for the first time and we recorded our first uh, demo tape. It was entitled Stellae Trajectio, and it's uh, Latin. It means uh, starfall. Now a very something very grandiose or something like that. After the recording of our first demo, I mean, we were extremely satisfied with the, res with the result back then. Uh, so we, we sent out a couple of copies to friends and uh, through some through some uh, weird channel it, uh, it reached the hands of, uh, of, uh, of, of the guys that were in charge of, of, the, of the first label home we chose for the band. So uh, we actually ended up with uh, um, with a record deal in our hands, even even before our, our demo was pressed uh, on cassette, as as was the custom back in those days. Well, the guys asked us if uh, we were ready to do an album, and uh, yeah, yeah, of course we said. But the truth was that we actually only had three songs written, so. It was kind of a hectic and stressed out situation the following the following uh, six months before we entered the studio with Peter and uh, recorded our first album Vitra. This was the same time as as our big. I mean, there were, there were lots of trouble coming into the band. Uh, I, I mean, as far as I remember, it was just. Uh, Two or three weeks after the recording of the full-length album, that uh, that the guy that we have worked with for so long, our, our drummer, decided to leave the band, and uh, this caused us major problem. 
We got a lot of tour uh, offers for the first album. And, I mean, back then, who knows? It, it could have been interesting. But uh, unfortunately, we, we, we were not able to do anything because we suffered this drummer syndrome for years as a band. Nobody really wanted to play with us because uh, I, I think the majority of, of the people and the players uh, s situated nearby uh, the town where we live, most of them, they saw our band as something very, very unserious and something, I mean, this was not uh, real music in a way. So some people, they agreed to play session for us. Uh, so at least we were able to do some gigs and uh, yeah. We worked a lot, but, but still, I mean, uh, the success that came with our first album was something that we never noticed ourselves, because it was more something that, I guess, maybe in, in the scene and, of course, within the European uh, listeners and, and also in the States, lots of people got the possibility to get into the band, but unfortunately our band was not ab able to play our own songs, so... It was a different time. 1997 uh, was a big change. It was the first time I met uh, Matthias Gran, the guy who was supposed to, to later join our band and, uh, and become our permanent drummer until this day, of course. But uh, I remember I was out one night drinking and uh, I, I was in the in the in the park. It was. Uh, it was cold, nobody else was there, and somebody, I, I just met up with this bum. <laughs> well, that was at least what it looked like to me back then. He was a punk, you know, and he, he was a badass, in a way. And uh, to start with, uh, me and Matthias never liked each other. But we started to talk, because, uh, I mean, we were drinking by, by ourselves back then. So, uh, yeah. Um, Matthias started to work with the band and uh, things really, really worked out well. So we decided to, to start rehearsing the material for our our second full-length album, Diabolical, together with this guy. And uh, yeah, he fit in perfectly. And uh, in the beginning of uh, 1998, it was uh, Andreas, Jans, me and Matthias and our previous guitar player, Morgan. We entered the ballerina studio and uh, started the recordings for the Diabolical album. I mean, it, it turned out great, just the way we wanted it back then. There's nothing else to say about that one. After the release of the Diabolical album, uh, we started doing more and more shows on the continent, Europe that is. Uh, to start with, I remember we, we did a lot of short van tours all over Germany, Belgium, Holland, France, things like that. It Back then it was basically more like weekend tours. Or, I mean, sometimes we worked for one week, two week maximum. Th that was about it, but, uh, but hey, it was great in a way. 98 was also the first time that we did a proper tour with Nagelfart. This was the first time for us. We did it together with uh, uh, Brutal Truth, uh, DSide, Six Feet Under and Aim and Amarth back then. This, this was also a great experience for us. And uh, I, I think it was after the period working with that one that, that uh, I mean suddenly there were so so many other things that came into our lives uh, for all of us so uh, after the release of the Diabolical album we, d we didn't work too much with the band I mean we still met maybe once a week sometimes twice a week rehearsed did gigs here and there but but not much and for a very long time I think it was about five years during this period me myself uh, I was also playing with Bewitched, and uh, it was through Bewitched that I uh, got in contact with Mar Marcus Norman, and 
Yeah, it was just natural. We invited him and uh, as our previous guitar player Morgan already he had already decided for himself that he that he was going to quit. So uh, it, it worked out so good together with us and and Marcus and we just brought Marcus into the band and uh, we started to write immediately together as a unit and. Uh, The outcome of that one was the Sheol album, and uh, this was the last album that Jens did together with us. Uh, it, it was a great album. It was a great time. After the release of the Sheol album, uh, we did lots of shows, we did lots of festivals. Uh, we toured Japan for the first time in our lives. It was also a great experience, of course. Um, I think the only problem with that album was that we never got a proper tour. So we were just doing gigs, 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 and uh, it didn't really pay off very, very well for us. And uh, I mean, the situation within the band got more and more stressful. This was something that uh, we realized that if, if we're gonna be, if we're gonna continue with this, in that case, we better, I mean, start doing this full time. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to to come out with with any good songs, you know. And uh, for me personally, that was always the most important thing with with our band to make songs for ourselves. And uh, I mean, having people liking our music and, and fans, that's just a great bonus. When we started writing for the new album, already then I knew that. Uh, that Jens was not gonna continue with us as a band. The time, I mean, his time was to do something else, something that he really wanted to do at the time. And I mean, yeah, it, the outcome of the whole was that he left the band and uh, I took over the vocals full time. I was still playing the bass back then, but uh, it was weird. But in the same way, uh, it, it was, it, I think it was a healthy injection for the band also. Just uh, got some other musical projects that he's working on right now, and uh, with a different uh, uh, workload in a way, I think. And I think it suits him better. So, I mean, I always wish him the best, whatever he does, or whatever, wherever he is, you know. He's, he's still a great friend to the band, and I mean, he's very an important guy for us. To follow this up, uh, we, we started to write and record for the new album, the album that was going to be the Pariah album. Um, I think we wrote music for about six, seven months, something like that, and then we entered the ballerina studio. Um, I mean, this is this is the same room where I did the vocals for that album, and this is the same building also. This place is a, a very special place. It's situated in the middle of nowhere, out in the woods. It's fucking cold here, man. You better believe it. But uh, but still, it's it, it's good because it it really gets it gives us the opportunity to to in a way to shelter ourselves from the outside world. Uh, whenever we're working on, on new stuff or whatever, I mean, yeah, that's how it is. This is a good place. Three weeks after the release of the Pariah album, we did our first European tour on that one. It was uh, a chaotic tour. We did it together with the with the, our Finnish uh, troll friends. It was a very good experience for me. It was the first time that I. Uh, that I did vocals full time throughout a whole tour. I mean, uh, singing every day for a month. I didn't know if I were gonna be able to make it or whatever. But still, I mean, uh, I, I, I always try to practice every day, every single day, doing the vocals. So uh, it, it was very good for me to, to know that. Uh, I mean, I can always perform. That, that that's a, that's a great feeling, I, I think. And, and for me it was extremely important at that time, as, uh, 
I mean, I, I've always been the bass player in every output that I that I ever was in. So for the first time, I'm. I'm here doing the lead vocals for my own band, and I mean, uh, I knew all the songs, and but it, it was still very strange. Um, we did a couple of festivals that summer. Uh, we did the Christmas uh, festivals together with uh, Exodus and uh, Hypocrisy that year, and uh, then we came home, rested for. A couple of months, and then we went out with Dark Funeral again in the beginning of uh, 2007. We did uh, one and a half month with them in Europe, and then we returned to Umi again. That's the exact point when we started to write and put together the ideas for the new album. And uh, yeah, here we are now. We have a new bass player. Uh, his name is uh, Peter Morgan Lee. Uh, this is an old friend of ours. He's been a friend of ours for years. Uh, when, the, when the time came for me to do the vocals on the, on the upcoming tour, I decided that uh, I, I didn't I didn't want to to be a, a bass player slash singer because uh, we always had a, a singer that was able to move around on stage and. I think that was a good concept and that was something that I personally never wanted to change so we took in this guy and uh, so long he's been with us on, uh, on three long European tours and uh, it's worked out amazing. Since two months back uh, Morgan is a permanent member of Nagelfar. This is a very good thing. So uh, I mean yeah, we're all very happy about it. I, I think uh, this guy he can he can add add up a lot to our band, and uh, I mean the chemistry is just where it where it's supposed to be. So, yeah, we're happy about it. When we came out here in the woods uh, two weeks ago, we were already done with the guitars and everything that that we have already we already had them recorded. But, uh, I mean, there were a couple of, of, of things that, that were supposed to be, to be added and also half of a song that, that wasn't put down. Uh, we had an extreme, extreme misfortune happening to us. Uh, when we arrived to this place, uh, Marcus' guitar amplifier broke down completely. The one that we had used uh, for the recording of the... Of, of all the guitars actually and uh, this time around uh, I mean this put on uh, it, this put us in a very peculiar situation I think um, I mean both me and Marcus we were fucking freaking out it, it, it was weird everything done and done suddenly such a, a big setback I remember us the first night we were fucking freaking out, and uh, because there was there, there was nothing that we could do but redo the guitars again, so we just uh, brought our shit out, starting started to fool around, and uh, we said, okay, we, we might just as well record some other shit. Uh, nine hours later, we came out with a new song that's gonna be on the new album. That's uh, that's interesting. It happens from time to time, if you're lucky.